This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Uh, Mad Canadian was in Cary this Thursday, so you have to catch the Mad Canadian again next week. So be sure to check out Monday and Tuesday's episode to find out where he and his food truck will be heading to next. Now, I want to show you, for the YouTube folks here, and Jared, you can pull this up here, one of the amazing options that the Mad Canadian has from time to time. It is his fish taco. It has street corn in it. Um, it has some coleslaw in it. You can, get, you can get baked beans. Just look at that for a moment and tell me, don't tell me that it does not look good because it, it's making me hungry just looking at it right now. You can get this, you can get um, briskets, you can get ribs, all sorts of great, great food that the Mad Canadian has to offer. And be sure to check out his social media for more information about him and his food truck, Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee company. All orders are fresh roast to order. All beans are fair trade certified. All beans are fair, are USDA organic. They are based out of Perrysburg, Ohio. Uh, they are, which is near Toledo. Uh, they are a marine owned, a veteran owned company, and they import all of their high quality coffee beans from Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far off lands. Gift cards are available because we know Christmas is coming. Um, and you get free shipping over fifty dollars. And if you if you know if you know you have that real coffee drinker in your life, and you know what kind of coffee they like, you can sign them up for subscribe, 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 and save service. So you can find your new favorite coffee, or maybe a loved one's new favorite coffee, over at IronBeanCoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How are you doing today, Jared? That you you just that's the thing that we're supposed to do when okay. the show okay. starts. Okay. Well, how is, how, can't, how is you can't, YouTube? You doing? can't do that now. <laughs> how is YouTube doing? How is the Sloop Cats doing today? Okay. Well, only Buckeye Esquire is answering you so far. Oh, <laughs> Gangling with the with a quick one worder snuck it in under there. Yeah, I'm tired too. Still a little jet lagged, but we're here. We're ready to do some Sloop picks today. So. Let's get into it, Jared. All right, let's do that. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Oh, I'm doing well, Jared. How are you? That look that didn't look normal there. <laughs> what? Did you did you like burp or something? Or <laughs> you know, it was like right here. And I thought it was going to come, but then it didn't. And yeah, it was a, it was a whole thing. Let's not talk about my gas. Let's not Crazy. do that. Um, all right. Uh, moving on. Today is it's still gas. <laughs> Today is one hole or the other. It's still gas. All right. I'm just going to move on here. Today's is our weekly sloop picks where we cover six. Yes, six games other than the Ohio State game, which you can listen to on our Wednesday's episode. <laughs> Not reading oh, chat, any of that going, out loud. The, 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 our, um, our chat is all shenanigans today. So let's, let's jump right into it, Jared. But first, I put this in Kyle's corner here, but I'm going to talk about it first because we got some recruiting news, Jared. We got a yes, boom, we do. We got a boom alert. As we're recording here, Joshua, guys, get some booms in the chat, please. Yeah, Joshua Padilla. Padilla. Oh, you wouldn't be the Sloopcast if we said it right on our first try. I although I, I have uh, said his name before, although I won't swear that any of those were Dayton, pronounced from, correctly. Yeah, uh, from Dayton, Ohio, a lineman. More more specific, from Wayne High School. He is the in the composite. He is the ninth best. Interior offensive lineman or center, maybe um, center guard, fourth, guard center. Yep, in the fourth best in the state of Ohio for the 2023 class. 
Absolutely. Uh, huge get for Ohio State. Um, you know, if you especially if you compare this, can't uh, that's that sounded like I said compare, can pair this um, with uh, just up the uh, up. Uh, is that 79, Kyle? Up 79, up into Finley, where you can no 75. Damn it. Close. Go up 70. Kyle's from, I'm from the Eastern half. Kyle's from the Western half. Um, up to Finley and, and get Luke Montgomery. It, you know, if you can get those pair of Ohio State offensive linemen in the 2023 class, that's an amazing start to, to that recruiting class. And, you know, maybe making up for a few misses in the 2022 offensive line recruiting class. So uh, an awesome start. Uh, second player so far of the 2023 class. You know, we, we've been focused a lot on the 2022 class lately and for good reason. You know, because we're we're creeping up on the early national signing day. That's less than two months away at this point. But yeah, a big win for the 2023 class. Yeah, absolutely here. All right. Slip picks, Jared. Slip we picks. have we have games this week. Some good. Some not so good, but we, we, we got we got some we got we got some good we got some games we're gonna pick here. So we're let's picking start, uh, let's some games. Off. We don't have <laughs> we to put a value games. we don't have to put a value judgment on it. We, we don't know football. they're good until they happen, right? We have football. We, we do Gang, have football. As Gangland said. All right, we got Wake Forest and UNC. Now, before I say the um the what Vegas has here, Jared. Wake Forest is undefeated, right? They sure are. And UNC has multiple losses, right? Uh, multiple, yes. Uh, four. They're they're a five hundred football team. So does that mean that um, UNC should be favored? Because they are, Jared. They are favored by two and a half points in this game. Welcome to the ACC, buddy. Welcome to the ACC. Although this same thing al almost exactly happened with uh, Wisconsin and Iowa last week, so mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> the, the those in uh, glass houses, I guess. Yeah. So I see you already wrote yours down here, Jared. I did. I did. And I did. So looks like both Jared and I are picking the same. We're both picking Wake Forest here. Yeah. Uh, um, I. Oh, go ahead. I'll let you. I'll let you start. I'm I'm playing the win and doubt game here. Uh, I'm going with Wake Forest because they are per Vegas, not per anyone else, but per Vegas the underdog. So that's that's where I'm going, um, because I think whatever this game is, I think it's close. That that's basically what I'm boiling that this game down to. Whatever it is, however it goes, I think it's close. That's that that's how I'm feeling it. Um, if you look at the points per game, Wake Forest is the little over 40. North Carolina is a little under 40. Uh, their defenses are relatively comparable. They both have good quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I think I think you just sort of go with the underdog on this one. I, I feel like these are very comparable football teams. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel Here's like your that, buck says, yeah, they're both bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I have Wake Forest here. I just I just feel I just feel more comfortable with Wake Forest's offense than North Carolina. Now, so that if this was at the beginning of the year, I would have I definitely would have said North Carolina based out of what expectations for UNC was with Yeah, with, they were um, with picked with Mac, to the with Mac Brown game. and the players that they had returning here, but Sam Howell. Yeah. North Carolina four and four this year, not the type of season they're expecting here. So I'll, I'll, I'll take Wake Forest. I'll take Wake Forest here. Uh, our and guest our... picker this week is Gangland. Gangland is picking North Carolina. He's in our live chat and he says he's playing the Mac Brown game. He's picking the team with Mac Brown. It's a bold, st bold strategy, Cotton. Bold strategy. <laughs> yes. All right. 
Um, we're going, we're going Midwest here. We're going, going to Big Ten country here, and can't get much more Big Ten than Sparty and Purdue. Um, I'm sorry, Kyle. A, hold on. I, I'm sorry. Pause. Pause, pause. Pause. I need you to pause. Our first game, Wake Forest in North Carolina. Our second game is Purdue and Michigan State. Mm-hmm. Is this still a football podcast? <laughs> yeah. Is this still that's... a football podcast? Sorry. I'm sorry. I thought this was a football podcast. Sparty, just verifying. Yep, Sparty, when we lock them in, is a two and a half point favorite. I'm not sure why they're not favored by more. It, I agree. it could be a letdown. We it definitely could be a letdown week in land. You, you beat you beat little brother, and you could have a little letdown brother, week. This brother. is this is the perfect game for Purdue to to spoil Michigan State here. But I'm going to tr- I'm going to trust one of the one of or maybe the second best running back in the Big Ten in Michigan State here. So I'll I'll, I'll pick Sparty because of their their running back. And that's fair. Um, I'm also going Michigan State here. Um, I per, per, we all know what Purdue is capable of, right? People always like to talk about the Pitt super weapon. The Pitt super weapon has nothing on the Purdue super weapon. Nothing mm-hmm. on it. Per, Purdue is the team that upsets teams. That's what they are. That's what they do. Um Michigan but, State needs to, Michigan State needs to end this game early before it gets nighttime. Yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> uh, I, I would I would highly recommend that. That being said, I, I Kyle, you know, it was only a week ago. It was exactly a week ago. Tony Gardenman and I were sitting here, mm-hmm. and we were asked the question. I believe it was Hoosier that asked us the question, but uh, someone correct me if I'm mistaken. Asks us the question, who's the most overrated or who who's the worst team in the top 15 or who's the most overrated team? In, I forget the exact wording. And Tony and I sort of him hawed around it. And I said, you know, if we're weighting it by how far up in the top 15 they are. Then I would say it's probably Sparty. And Tony's like, yeah, probably. And, you know, sitting here now, I don't know that I agree with myself. Um, I. I maybe i maybe it's time to start believing in sparty maybe it's time uh, uh, this would this would definitely be a game i'd be interested in, in watching just to kind of prepare prepare ourselves to see what what michigan state will throw at ohio state in a couple of weeks yeah oh and well these are ohio state's next two games mhm that too yep so uh, it's a must watcher for you Ohio State fans out there. Indeed. All right, we're going Gangland to keep going. picks Purdue uh, going against us on that. He, he Kyle, first two games so far, we both picked the same. Gangland went off opposite. opposite. Let's let's see how this goes. All right, all right, we're going Big Twelve country, but we're going to go east to West Virginia, where they host Oklahoma State. Yeah, you think about that, Jared. Uh, <laughs> Oklahoma State is a three and a half point favorite over four and four West yeah. Virginia. All of these numbers are weird. I or maybe it's the football. It. Maybe it's the football season that's weird. If we're being honest, and I yes, West Virginia has the opportunity to pull up an upset here. They've done it once already this year. Uh, but I'm I'm going to stick with Oklahoma State in this one. I'll I'll take I'll take the points here, and and take um, take the Cowboys, in orange. Uh yeah no uh uh-uh. uh I'm I'm going West Virginia here. Is West Virginia actually any good? No no they aren't. But I've been on the Oklahoma State is actually terrible train all year, and now is the time. Now is the time that everyone knows it. Like they already lost to Iowa State, of course. But they have West Virginia now. They have Oklahoma at the end of the year. Um, 
they lose two more times. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, they lose two more times before the end of the regular season. They will lose to Oklahoma and they will lose, I think, this weekend against West Virginia, but maybe it's someone else. But I think that there's like a, I think this game's like 50 50. I think this game's like 50 50. And therefore, give me the underdog I, I, to give me the Mountaineers. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. These, these, these first three games here, you got, you got teams with undefeated and a team with one loss versus teams that are, that are 500 or just above 500. Yeah. But yet they're so close in, yeah. in the Vegas lines here. Undefeated Wake versus 500 UNC. Yeah. Undefeated Michigan State versus barely over 500 Purdue. And then you have Oklahoma State, who is. We just talked about it. Mm-hmm. By the way, just yeah. looking at the uh, CBS acronym for for Oklahoma State, because that's where we do our slip picks through is through the CBS poll picker. Um, the The way they shorten Oklahoma State is OK last. And that's how <laughs> I feel about the Cowboys. OK, last. It's funny. Kyle, that's right. three games. That's three games. So I think that means it's time to do another ad read, which will be our last ad read of the show. So um, do you want to go first or am I going first? How are we doing it? Um, I'll go here. All uh, right. Med Canadian, Med Canadian Barbecue Company wants me to tell you all that um, moving forward right now, the Med Canadian will be doing the um the barbecue and bingo every thursday at the olc shrine cafeteria from 4 to 7 p.m every thursday so be sure to hit them up next thursday again and carry at the olc shrine cafeteria to get some of that delicious delicious barbecue and other great great um sides that the mad canadian has um great briskets um, just looking at down the list here of what else he has. Um, talked about fish tacos that he that he makes. Uh, he has ham, pulled pork, um, brisket again. It seems like everybody loves the the brisket there. Um, a lot of people like the coleslaw, the baked beans, uh, the corn there. Um, just everything, everything that the Macaroni has to offer. Just get it all. Just get everything that he has on the menu there. Uh, be sure to check out his social media for more information about him and his food truck and where he might be heading to next. Mackey Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. Kyle, I'm going to ask you a favor. Say medium, dark, or flavored. Medium, dark, or flavor. No. Say what? Say, say You smartass. You smartass. I swear to God. All right, let's take a look at the flavored coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. Um, the Bananas Foster, Kyle, the Bananas Foster back in stock. So if you were worried that that Bananas Foster was gone forever, it is not. Uh, I, I do regret to inform you, however, the cinnamon roll still sold out. The mom's carrot cake still sold out. But guess what is back in stock? The white chocolate peppermint, Kyle, it hasn't been in stock for months. Ooh, for months. Get that. It has not been in stock for months. You can now get the white chocolate peppermint coffee. How exciting is that? I assume it's seasonal. I should ask that question, but hey, you think they sent you some in the unicorn gang land? That's pretty rad. I would, that would be amazing if you just got some white chocolate peppermint coffee in the unicorn, because the unicorn. (laughs) <laughs> see what it did there. Uh, the unicorn, uh, the description here is who the hell knows what kind of coffee it is. Uh, it's probably going to be a flavored coffee. Um, oh, look at this. This is new. Uh, he has listed here on the site some of the things that it has been in the past. In the past, it's been a bourbon praline pie. It has been a gingerbread latte. It has been a frosted pumpkin roll, a caramel rum crunch, a strawberry marshmallow, a winter raspberry swirl, but who knows? 
you you might get like Gangland just said he thinks he got some peppermint and white chocolate. Who the hell knows what it's going to be? That's the adventure of the unicorn. Uh, you can get those flavored coffees. There's a bunch of flavored coffees I didn't even mention, and then there's just a even more fla- uh, unflavored coffees that you can pick up for yourself over at IronBeanCoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. There we go. Okay. We got three more last games. Three last three games. So we're going to head south now. We're going. Oh, actually, it's in Texas. Darn you, SEC, trying to go westward. Uh, we got Auburn and Texas A and M. Uh, Texas A and M is a four and a half point favorite. I believe they are both. Yep, this is in the they rank thirteen and fourteenth here. But Texas A and M at home is a four and a half point favorite. I have I have Texas A and M at Kyle Field. Nice name. Uh, I'll take the points here. Yeah, uh, that I, I you know I totally get that. I totally understand that. Uh, I in fact I agree with it. I will also take Texas A and M. Um, four and a half, not quite enough. I, I think if this if this ventured even into like six and a half territory, I may have been a little more concerned. But at four and a half, I'm going to take take Texas A&M. I like them significantly more than I like Auburn. Um, the fact that they beat Ole Miss means nothing to me. The fact that they beat Arkansas means nothing to me. I don't care how well ranked mm. those teams were. They were never actually good. Um, and, you know, in the past three games, we've seen Texas A&M beat Alabama. And even if yeah. this isn't the best Alabama we've seen in the past few years, it's still the team that out recruits everyone. It's still an insanely talented team. It's still Bama, damn it. So, mm-hmm. and then, you know, their next two games were against completely overmatched opponents in Missouri and South Carolina, but they Took did what you business. should do against those teams and, and, you know, made the game non-competitive. So yes, I'm gonna take Texas A&M. The, the four and a half is not going to scare me off and gangland feels the same. Uh, he is, He's going to go ahead and, and pick Texas A&M as well. All right. Speaking of teams that are overrated, um, I, I think I think Auburn is overrated. I just, their only good win they have is against Arkansas. Maybe maybe it's Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Uh, Ole, Ole Miss. I, I don't like either of those. I think both those teams are overrated, but Ole Miss is still a lot better than Arkansas, in my opinion. Okay. I, I, I still don't like Auburn. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're heading back to we're heading back to Big Ten uh, country here. We're gonna have Indiana taking on no, it's, Michigan. Who's it's a Texas A and M. Uh, Kyle said it was at Kyle Field. Remember, he made the whole yes, thing because it's his it name. <laughs> uh, Indiana <laughs> taking on Michigan. Uh, Michigan looking to bounce back after their loss to their big brother. Um, Michigan is a nineteen and a half point favorite. Indiana versus Michigan. I must again ask you, Kyle, is this still a football podcast? That's right. I almost made Kyle spit bourbon on that one. (laughs) Nice. All right. Uh, Yeah. Indiana, Michigan, uh, Michigan, huge favorite here. Almost 20 points, 19 and a half points. Um, This is being played in Michigan stadium. Um, Indiana, you know, we, we were defending Indiana a while back, right? Um, they go on a four-game losing streak. And, like, Penn State, very good football team. Michigan State, very good football team. Ohio State, very good football teams. And, like, we're like, yeah, they lost, they lost these three straight games, but look at, the, look at the quality of the opponent. And then they go and they lose to Maryland, and it's just like, well, fine. Lose to Maryland, Indiana. The hell are you doing? Um, I still believe this is one of the better two and six football teams you're going to find in the country, which granted is not a, not a high hurdle to hurdle. I get that. Mm -hmm. But uh, (sighs) Kyle, I I still have to take Indiana here. Uh, 20 points just feels like too much. Um, We've not seen Michigan blow out many teams this year. If we take a look at the Michigan schedule Mm -hmm. against big 10 opponents 
Uh, they beat Rutgers by seven. They beat Wisconsin uh, by uh, 21. They beat the, and Wisconsin hadn't put their stuff together yet at that point. They beat Nebraska by three. They beat Northwestern by uh, that would be 20. Math, math is hard sometimes. Point is, is that I, I feel like if you're comparing like what Ohio State's been doing to teams versus what Michigan's been doing to teams, Ohio State, you know, against common opponents is performing much better. And 20 points is just a lot. It's just a lot for an offense that I don't feel great about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that being I got, said, I, got... I, I don't think Indiana has Penix back either, which really hurts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got I got the the Hoosiers to cover here. Uh, same thing with Jared said. Nineteen and a half is a lot to try to, to try to cover, and the way that Michigan's been playing lately, almost lost to Nebraska. They had a comfortable lead to their little to their um to their big brother, and lost to. I I almost think that Michigan. Michigan is just going to kind of just not elevate anymore the rest of the season. They have their one loss to to their rival, in-state rival, and I think I don't know. I just don't have confidence in this Michigan team anymore. So I'll I'll, I'll take the anymore. Here. You ever did? <laughs> All right, you got me. Yeah, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Michigan still wins this game by like fourteen points, by seventeen points. Um, but 19, touchdowns. 19 and a half just feels like a little too much. Uh, but Kyle gangland disagrees with you. Um, he doesn't think Indiana can do anything. He doesn't think Indiana can score. So, uh, he's, he's picking Michigan to win and cover. I think, I think, I think gangland a, is a, um, is a closet Michigan fan. How oh, that that's a low Kyle. Apol <laughs> Kyle, apologize. Hey, hey, he he said apologize. that before to me. He said that to me before. Oh, okay. Turnabout's fair play. That's that's fine. Love, love you, love you, still, Gangland. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, all right. Last game we have here. Can it be slander if it's not your real name? Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Get Black Eye Esquire in on this. Can it be slander if it's not your real name? <laughs> all right, Jared. We have one more game. Yeah, and apparently this is the Herb Street special. Oregon and Washington. Just looking at this game before real quick because I have no idea how Washington's doing. And yeah, hey, look at this, Jared. Another 4-4 four and four team. <laughs> yeah, taking against on the one a, loss. A one-loss team. And, oh, it's less than a touchdown. Oregon is a six-and-a-half point favorite in this game. I, I Vegas knows what they're doing, Jared. But I'm questioning this week, though. <laughs> Tony and I had the same conversation last week, and then I proceeded to not have the best of weeks ever. Although I still caught up to you. Yeah, see, I have I have Oregon. I have Oregon in this one. I just have no confidence in Washington being able to put up points because that's what they're going to need to do against against Oregon here in the past few games here. 20, 21, 17, and then um, 24 in their past four games here. They got to put up like at least 30 points to have a chance against Oregon here. And I, I just don't see it. I think, or I think Oregon is just going to have their way here <clears throat> and be able to score 40 plus points on this, on this Washington team. So at least a 10 point victory. If, if Washington is able to score, score points. So I'll, I'll pick Oregon to cover. Buckeye Esquire, the question, oh, I don't think, you think he's just chatting in here. I don't know if he's listening. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll fill him in later. The, yeah, here, here's what it comes down. And like, I could, I could do a whole thing here. They've both played UCLA recently. They've both played Arizona somewhat recently. They've both played Stanford recently. The Pac-12 is not very, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's not a, there's not a long, there's not a long list of teams in the Pac-12. There's a lot of common recent opponents here. 
is what I'm trying to say. And I could do a whole thing. But ultimately, what it comes down to for me is that Washington lost to an FCS school. There's that too. Yep. You don't lose to an FCS school and then have me put my hard-earned money on you. It just doesn't happen. Give me Oregon. All right. And we have Gangland choosing Oregon as well to cover. Is that our first game? I think that's our first game we we all agreed, Jared. Uh, um, no, no, we did pick. We did um, all three pick Texas A&M too. I, I think I Squire just gave Gangland permission to sue me. Or you, rather. Why did I just assume it was me? It's you. <laughs> all right. So, um, anything else? Good luck any, with any that. Other in- so... <laughs> Looking at these games here, chaos. It is November. It is the month yes. of chaos. It is the month of chaos here. Uh, it's been do we a see any? Do we see any potential chaos in this in this week here? Uh, For sure. Could El- Could Illinois pull up an upset at at the Gophers? Well, I mean, I don't think we have to look too far past our our sloop picks here. You were just talking about how you have all of these highly ranked teams with very small spreads mm-hmm. yep. we have a high potential for chaos this this week yep you went unc over wake purdue over michigan state west virginia and- over oklahoma state um auburn and texas a&m are about the same and they both have two losses so uh no chaos potential there i don't see indiana upsetting michigan i don't see much chaos potential there but washington is less than a dog uh, less than a touchdown dog to, to Oregon. Mm-hmm. You have some possibility there. Um, Kyle, it, you were just ba- saying. What What about we got we have a team playing an armed forces team, Navy in Notre Dame. No, Navy makes teams look bad, but the teams still end up winning. Yeah. <laughs> That's typically how Navy or Army games go. That's fair. That's fair. So people were like, oh, this will be a game that we like think chaos might happen that we'll keep an eye on. But ultimately, Notre Dame ends up winning. So I've been I've been giving this team a lot of credit. Um, throughout the season, but but <laughs> but but maybe the Seminoles over the Wolfpack Seminoles have been playing better than they had at the beginning of the year. Maybe maybe an upset um, at home against the Wolfpack. Pass. Okay. I'm passing on that one. Kyle, for God's sakes, let's not talk about any more ACC schools. I, right, you want to talk I, about I um, Pac-12 teams? No, not some especially. Some Pac-12 after dark? It, that depends. Do you want to talk about Oregon some more, or, or are you going elsewhere? Um, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Kyle... Correct me if I'm wrong. Was Oregon the only Pac-12 team to make the the first playoff committee rankings? Yeah, I'm, the I'm getting only team. I'm yeah, I'm getting I'm getting rankings and or I'm getting yeses in the chat. Um, so no, I don't want to talk about any more Pac-12. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. That's all the picks. That is all other games that we want to talk about. Anything else, Jared, before we get into some questions? Now, nah, let's get some Ask Slewcast questions, then let's GTFO. All right. Nomad starting us off here in anticipation of, oh, well, yes, anticipation of Cincinnati getting ranked fifth or sixth, which they did. Is it time to break the wheel? Uh, we're, we're team break the wheel here. We always have been. We always will be. Um but no, no, no one wants to listen to our radical plan to fix college football. So it's, it is what it is in, until it isn't. But if you're interested, go to fix dot the sloopcast.com and read our proposal. All right. Another question from nomad. You have to choose and use one stat for ranking teams. No subjectively allowed. Which do you use? None. The F plus. No. FEI or the SP plus none you can't guys look it up it's called Goodhart's law you can't do it no. once you 
once you say, and this is what these formulas do, they, they define what a quality win is. They define what a blowout win is. Okay. How do you do that? Well, if a team wins by more than 14 points, then it's considered a blowout win. Okay, well, then you're just going to have teams calling timeouts and kicking last-second field goals in order to win by 14. Well, actually, it uses the Vegas number. It uses the Vegas number, and if they cover... Oh, well, that's that's great. Let's incentivize teams to ensure they cover. That's going to go well. Once you turn a metric into a goal, once you turn a metric into a standard, it ceases to become a good metric. Mm -hmm. It just yep. doesn't work anymore. Well, Jared, just keep the formula secret. Yeah, right. You think you're going to get away with keeping the formula secret? You think people will sign on? You think people, you think the college football world will sign on to a secret formula and allow it to pick the, and no one knows what's in it? No one knows what's in the formula. But we're going to allow it to pick the, pick the playoff teams. No one's signing up for that. And then a lot of these formulas take into account recruiting rankings. Okay, so now we're giving ESPN recruiting and 24-7 sports recruiting and rivals. We're giving them authority to help pick who gets in the playoffs. These metrics work. The S&P and a lot of these metrics work because they don't matter. The second you say they matter, they will cease to work. Goodhart's Law. Look it up. Uh, Gangland in our chat asked, does Ohio State go after Gary Patterson for the defensive coordinator position? Oh my God. What I just like, take, take that possibility, melt it, put it in a needle and put it in my arm. I would love nothing more. That being said, no, I think I'll, I think I'll spend, I think I'll spend a year or two in television and then pick up like a big boy job, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you said to me, Jared, actually, there's late breaking news that he is accepting the LSU job. I'd be like, yeah, that sounds right. Now, mm -hmm. would he? Is that a thing he'd be interested in? I don't know, but it's totally believable. It's totally believable that he would all of a sudden go to a place where he has money and resources and boosters and all yep. of that. Uh, it, it was totally believable to me. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, He's not taking a Buckeye, DC job, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Buckeye Zach, with Bama starting at number two in the in the seat in the uh, college football playoff rankings, could this mean the SEC could get three teams in, or at least a two-loss Alabama in at the four spot? Who's the third team? Yeah, I have no idea who the third team would be. Who's the third team? Everyone in the SEC has two or more Texas losses. No. no. Everyone, they're not putting a two loss anybody, Bama included, and sure as hell not Texas A&M or Auburn or Ole Miss or any of them. Sure as hell not them. I don't even think they put in a two loss Bama over a one loss Oregon, a one or two or a a zero or one loss Oklahoma, a zero loss Cincinnati, a one loss Ohio State. No, zero chance, zero chance. The one rule, the one rule that is held the in, throughout all, that is held out through all the playoffs so far is no, no two loss team has made it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got too many teams waiting right there. Um, an undef not going to happen, but an undefeated Sparty, a one loss Pac 12 winner, a one loss Big 10 winner. Um, Who's your, you are aware that Bama didn't go to the playoffs just last year, right? Yeah. A undefeated Big 12 champion. There's a lot of teams right there that would get in ahead of Ala a two me, loss not Alabama. Two, two years ago. I, yeah, two years ago. Two years ago um, is what I meant to say. But the question is, like, if Alabama wins a close one to Georgia, then you could you could definitely see a two a 
two SEC team in it. Two SEC team, sure. So, like, we can even, we can have the argument about a two-loss Bama maybe getting in if they maybe lose close to Georgia in the... We can have that conversation. I'm going to say no, absolutely not. We can have that conversation. But if you want to have a conversation with me about a two-loss Auburn or a two-loss Ole Miss or a two-loss Texas A&M, not, not happening. Zero chance. No, no way in hell. Zero chance. No way. Not happening. Agreed. All right. Nomad with um, a couple more questions. Are the two most important games for the Big Ten in the final week, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Ohio State and, and Teton? No. It's Ohio State versus uh, Michigan State and Ohio State versus Michigan. Who who cares? So, I'm sorry, Big Ten West folk. Who cares? It's a competition to see who loses to Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Listen, three is teams. It time to, is it time three to row teams, the boat? Three teams in the top 10 are in the Big Ten East. And Ohio State hasn't played the other two yet. And the, and the other three and the other three teams in the um in the Big Ten West are 20, 21, and 22. Yeah. So it's no, it's not. I don't care what happens in the West. It's even if it's not Ohio State, even if it's Sparty, even if it's Michigan, whoever it is, it ends up representing the East. They win it, the they're winning. The East is winning the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kabuto asks, pretend your your promotion slash um, relegation plan will never happen. It which won't. Gr- which <laughs> group of five? Fix.thesloopcast.com. Which group of five have their own playoff and or separate rankings? Uh, you're admitting defeat if you do that, um, which honestly, I think like there comes a point in time in which that might happen. I think there comes a point in time, even if they don't use Kyle and I's system of relegation and promotion, fix.thesloopcast.com, then you, I still think you eventually see, I think the Big 12 dies. I think the Big 12, if it happens now, if it happens later, the Big 12 dies. You will see the remaining good teams, and I say good, not great. The remaining good teams of the Big 12 will scatter to the other conferences. Some of them won't. You will have four major conferences. And this is assuming that the Pac-12 survives. It might not. Mm -hmm. This is assuming the Pac-12 survives. And you end up with four conferences. We're, We're heading towards four conferences. Those four conferences at that point would be stupid in my mind not to then turn themselves into a semi semi pro league break off from the NCAA and just play among themselves. Yep. I yep. think it's dumb not to. All right. One, one last question from Gabuto here. <clears throat> Would the college football playoff rankings release be more fun if they never gave any explanation, Gary Barta, and we just watched the world scream? Well, first, I want to say this. One of my absolute least favorite things about the entire playoff system, and like <laughs> there are things to choose from, right? Like we got we got stuff to choose from here. One of my least favorite things about the playoff system is the chair pay, the chairperson interview. Why? Because we like hyper analyze little every little thing he says. Oh, well, he said that they had them above them because of this. The man is attempting to summarize he is attempting to portray the consensus opinion of 13 people how do you in a sentence or two describe the independent feeling of 13 people in a sentence or two you can't it's an impossible task you know the committee we we like to say well the committee does this and the committee does that and this is how the committee thinks and this is what the committee wants to see Okay, you realize that's 13 people, 13 individuals with 13 separate opinions. And on top of that, we rotate about a third of them every year. Mm -hmm. So like every three or four years, it's a completely new committee. 
So people are like, I want consistency. I wish the I wish the playoff committee was more consistent. I wish they were more consistent. It's impossible. Do, do you want to ensure that these 13 people are thinking the exact same way as the 13 people from three years ago? That's an impossible ask, too. They're, they're new people. You can't expect new people to have the exact same thought process as the old people. And then, like I said, there's 13 of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's... Yeah, this this it, is this is the system we're playing in. Like I said, though, if we if we get to the point where we can get like four conferences it, and they break away, then those it's, four it's, conferences can have their conference championship games and they can decide that however they want. And then those four champions can go into a four team playoff. No committees, no nothings. You don't need it. You just have. Four conference championship four, four conference championships. So that's eight teams then you have four conference champions and then that becomes your four team playoff. It's easy. You just it's, need the big 12 to die first. <laughs> it's the E and ESPN. Uh, it's, it's also the S with the dollar sign. It's, it's, it's also the D for Disney. Yeah. <laughs> All of that. All of that. <laughs> By the way, right, can, um, can we all just stop watching the playoff committee show? Can we just stop watching it? It's just the television product for ESPN. All, all I, These all committee I rankings saw, don't yeah. matter. They don't matter. Stop watching it. It doesn't matter. It's a television product for ESPN. There's zero reason why the committee needs to give out rankings until the last one, other than to make Disney more money. Yeah, that's fair. I, I never really cared about what the chairman said. I mean, I'll, I'll watch just to say, oh, I'm curious on how they, uh, how, who's rank, how they ranked. And that's it. That's it. Well, the, but the thing is, I just, the, the show comes on at seven. I'll jump on Twitter at like seven fifteen, and then I'll see the rankings. And it's just way easier that way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, Jared, that's all the questions we have here today. Let's go ahead and kick us off. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that's it for today's show. Um, uh, everyone, please visit discord.thesloopcast.com. Me. Me, gangland. <laughs> um, and also, please visit survey.thesloopcast.com. Please visit survey.thesloopcast.com. It's five question, or excuse me, it's it's a five minute quiz. It'll take you like, guys, why can't I talk? <sighs> it's a it's a five minute quiz. It's made up of only ten percent. God, I saw you say percent down there, and I I can't. I really just can't right now. Kyle, do you want to talk for me? Because I I can't. You're doing great, Jared. Thank You're doing you. great. Thank you. That's what I needed. <laughs> it's 10 questions it'll take you five minutes see it wasn't even that hard it's 10 questions it'll take you five minutes uh you don't have to sign up for anything you don't need to provide an email address you don't need to make an account um it's it's super easy it's it asks nothing of you other than like five minutes in your opinion uh, and it's just going to help us figure some stuff out, maybe determine the direction of the show, um, a few other things. So please just check out survey.thesloopcast.com. And when you're done with that, come on over to discord.thesloopcast.com because that's where we hang out now because Twitter sucks and we have fun there. So come hang out, discord.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, that's it. Uh, you already did Kyle's Corner. You moved oh. it to the beginning of the show this week. It's your corner. I guess you can do with it whatever you want. No, just... Good luck to my alma mater as they move on to week two of the Ohio high school football playoffs. How, how's Absolutely. your school doing, Jared? Do you know? I, I, I don't. Well, I don't. I don't know. They're 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 in the second week. I can tell you that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that I knew. That I knew. <laughs> has it only been one week? Yep. This, this is, has this been is a long week, week man. This has been a long week. Yeah, I know they won their first. They they beat. Uh, licking valley 
last week. Uh, so yeah, they are on to. And they play two. um Carlton. Don't don't know them. Um, I know I know and I know Grove Grove Columbus Grove plays Liberty Center. And Kyle, just you were just you, bound um, and determined to make this episode an hour long. <laughs> and the Med, this is for the Mad Canadian. Mad Canadians carry high school plays Defiance to Nora. There you go. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by uh, Andrew Gibbard. I believe I'm pronouncing that name right. Andrew Gibbard. Um, he has an album right now that is in pre-release. It's in pre-release. I'm going to link to the band camp page for it it's in pre-release you can buy the full thing on december 3rd the name of the album is called homemade homemade it's andrew gibbard um podcast folk just stay right where you're at you'll hear you'll hear this song uh for the youtube people check out the show notes where you can uh just click on it and then you can listen to the song that way and also, I'm going to put the survey.thesloopcast link down there in the show notes as well. But with all of that being said, I would like everyone to support. Uh, nope, that's not how I say it. Kyle, I can't today. Drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters once again. This is Andrew Gibbard. Andrew Gibbard.